go. Yeah, put a stone down and say hello. Jan Gaz, 11Q. Let's put on the coordinates and check the game info. Okay, I'll do a 4-4 four, four and a 4-3. Game info. So, yeah, it's reverse Komi. I get the first move and I get five and a half points of Komi, but he's a stronger player. Hmm. So far, he has uh, mimicked me. I'll approach the 3 4 corner. The unbalanced corner. He backs off. I will back off too. Okay, he makes an extension. I will enclose this corner. How about if I do the high enclosure? I don't do that very often. Maybe get some experience with it. The follow-up is a large knight's move here, as I understand it, at R8. This is, uh, looks like an overextension here, I don't know. And uh, yeah, there's a diff distant approach. So I could finish this, but I think it's bigger to approach his, uh, his corner. Could approach from either side. I guess I have stones here and uh, one stone here. These are closer, but they're low. This is further away and high, so I really can't claim all of this, although I suppose I could try and build some giant moyo there. Okay, pretty typical response. I will do a three space back off here. There is still an invasion point here, as I understand it. <clears throat> yeah, and he jumps in the middle now. So this is surrounding my stone, surrounding my corner. Here, first of all, let's put some pressure on this stone, see if it wants to run or what. Okay, he's not afraid. He just attaches. I'm gonna keep the corner. As my corner gets stronger, the stone gets weaker. He should um, Hane once again, I imagine. So I can Hane here, or Atari here. Uh, but I think I will take this chance to do the uh, Large knights move off of this corner. Let's see if I can get a good enclosure here. So there's a cut here. Ah, so he did come back and fix. So uh, let's see, I can cap this stone. I can extend. Mm-hmm. So I peeps here to try and get some strength to this stone that he's thrown in the middle here. Let's see where those guys run to. Okay, I want to protect this area over here. And he just jumps straight out. So I can take away his base here. Let's do that first. Let's see. He might not respond to that. But it also gives uh, more space to this group. He did respond. Okay, now I do, you know, <laughs> thinking things through. I do need to worry a little bit about the corner. He jumps in here. I connect. 
and then he pulls back. He's like scooped away all my space there, and uh, I want to make sure I have enough room to live. So if I play here, and then he peeps, and I connect, or I could I could descend on this side. I'll feel safer about this area if I have this stone here. So I did take his base away here, but I did it in Gote. <clears throat> but I can still pressure this group. It doesn't doesn't have a base and it doesn't have eyes yet. <clears throat> and it's not connected to anything. This group of two stones can still go to the corner or come out or go on this side, so it's not a problem. This corner, I think, is safe for now, and this, this looks safe. So I think my groups are good. I should look for his groups. This group looks like it's alive with an eye over here and an eye over here. Or maybe I can throw something in if I get stronger over here. And the corner, I could try and scoop something out of the corner there. But this looks like his weakest group over here. Hmm, well, he's taking his time to move here. Okay, he's going to pressure here. I want to keep that stone. Maybe he can build an eye here in Sente. Kind of has an eye there already. <clears throat> yeah, I thought he might have to connect. Okay, so anyway, I was going to extend here first. Strengthens this group, threatens the poke in here. Um, so he gets a sente move in. Do I want to ignore that? I mean, if he takes that stone... Oh, if he takes the stone, he's also attiring this stone. Yeah, I guess I don't want to give up that much of the corner. Okay, and then he responded over here. So I can poke in here. Am I alive in the corner? One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. If he honeys there, I go here. Throws in, take. If I go here, throws in there, extend. <clears throat> so if I poke here and he pushes, this is what I'm wondering. It takes this eye away, but if I block, he can cut it off, cut my stone off. So that means when he pushes, I have to run out with this stone. Or I could just play here and let him have one eye there. Try and surround this group in Sente. I didn't like it if I lost my last liberty on this group. It makes the throw ends inside much more dangerous into the corner. So I would prefer, if I can, to keep this group uh, not only in the corner but also uh, on the outside with outside liberties. So that's why I didn't want to throw in here and have me run. Run. He could run this stone out, but he could take away all my liberties on the outside of this group. Mm -hmm. Okay, so I will honey here. I think I can honey because these uh, three stones, their, their liberties are not all taken yet. So 
so they're not that weak. Can I double honey? That's the question. <clears throat> double honey, he cuts, I connect, or he cuts, I extend. I think I can. And he has to come back and fix. So I wonder if he wants to. Um, yeah, let's poke at his eyes <laughs> some more. Uh, he's ignoring that. Okay, so if I turn here, I can capture this stone, right? I turn, he extends, I tarry, he turns, and I go here. Okay, he doesn't care. Um, yeah, maybe I should stop harassing this group. Yeah, I'm going to try some throw-ins in, in the corner here. Okay, decided to split me off that way. If I go here, and he goes there, then when I go here, it's an Atari. I go here and he hanes at d18, then I can push at d17, and it's an Atari on this stone. And if he responds, then I'll take that stone on d18. So yeah, this way I just uh, reduce his corner there. He can, oh, he just, um, wants to win that stone back. Let's let him have that. Let's do the shoulder hit here. I think it's a bigger move than just defending one stone here. I will first uh, connect back for safety here. And let's uh, Honey on this side. I've also got these stones I could connect up with the potentially. And um, once again, I'm cutting these stones off from life support from a connection to the other side. Yeah, so here that stone can connect either way. So you can cut, I'll connect here. He goes after this stone, I can connect back to these guys, which are alive. I have a cutting point here I could look at. This, I want to keep this guy. Ah, uh, yeah, there's a danger here, isn't there? Uh, I need to extend this way. You know, he could have run with this stone first. Maybe that would have been a more dangerous uh, response. I still have this cut here or here. If I connect here, then this is a double Atari. So this connection is Sente at F15, I think. 
go ahead and play that. Yep, he decided to connect that way. So if I cut here, he connects, I extend, and I've got um, one, two, three liberties, and that group has one, two, three. So if I connect here, that's also a kind of sente, right? The connection here, he connects, I extend, and I've got three liberties, and he has two. Let's respond here first. I'll keep this in reserve. I want to keep keep my group's base over here. Let him have the corner. Now, can these two stones really kill these three stones? Say, so after I've got them, three, two stones here, he could honey. I could go here. He could cut from this side. Hmm, he's getting a big side over here. And I'm not at all sure I can kill those stones. So I go here, he connects, I extend and he hanes. I'm down to two liberties, he's down to two liberties, it's my move. I have two Ataris I could play. This one he extends and he's, then I go on this side and he's got two liberties and I have two liberties and it's his turn to move and he can cut here. I guess it doesn't really work. Okay, so let's look at what's going on in the rest of the board. Uh, so I have this one corner, I have this uh, group on the side, and he has this side, this corner, and a lot in here. So I should probably try to break this up. I could just jump out from this group. Let's pressure over here first. If I play another move, will he respond? Okay, let's push in, create a cutting point there. And let's um, jump out on this side too. I'll extend there. Okay, now I want a honey here, and uh, I want to see if I can do something with this cut here. So if I cut here, and he responds, he might respond with a connection over here. Can I extend and kill inside? Or if I just cut here directly, and he connects on the other side, more Ataris, and this is an Atari. Let's cut, cut first, ask questions later. I was worried if I cut on the other side, he would just connect on this side. If he just connects on the other side, makes this group safe, then I'll go after these stones. So Ihane's there, so this is an Atari. He takes, I can squeeze. Did 
Does it help if I extend once? Don't think so. Aha, uh -huh. he didn't uh, he didn't just take, he went that way. Interesting. Yeah, I was expecting to get an Atari on this stone, and it looks like I'm not getting it. He comes back and connects anyway. So I can do this, Sincente. And I can extend here, Sente, because this will be a double Atari here. And I can extend here. The, the ladder does not favor me. I don't think it's a ladder anyway, yeah, because this stone is going to be um, captured, captured. So let's go this way. I will stay connected over here. Let's see, one, two, three liberties on this group. <laughs> be a little careful there. <laughs> Okay, so looks like he's trying to do something in the middle here. First, let's see if we can disrupt his side a little bit. See how he reacts to this. So he defends this group. Yeah, he does want to stay underneath. Okay, so if I go here, and he cuts in this direction, he might be isolating these stones. So let's just be conservative there. Yeah, now I can go here. If he comes back, cut. Let's see what we can do. I think leaning on this stone will be good enough to get me something on the outside here. He agrees. Okay, so pull back now or jump out first. Let's pull back first. Okay, I'll respond to that. Ah, he's destroying my eye shape there. Mm -hmm. Let's uh, honey back. Let him have that stone. I can connect here. With pressure on this stone. Let's take back. Ah, I just connected there. Okay, let's um, Atari this stone. And um, so if I go here, he extends. I go here, he connects. So I actually have to come from the other side here, huh? I push here and he pushes and I go here. He's got two liberties, but this stone only has two liberties. So I guess I need to connect there. Wow. It's not, not going that well for me. 
<laughs> in all honesty, to be honest. wonder if there's some great co-threats I have here. Ah, he just uh, extended. So he's going to keep me from getting an eye here by uh, blocking on this side. And I pull down, he takes there. So that is not going to be an eye. Let's extend up in this direction. And... Uh, Over here, this this group might get isolated here. One, two, down to three liberties. He's not afraid. Let's cut it off. This cutting stone will be useful anyway uh, to help me get some outside momentum. And now let's see where this ladder goes. It goes to my stones. Yeah, well, it's not a ladder anyway. So the extension here is an Atari. Ah, I can extend once. And he will extend and then I turn. He will follow down. So I guess I, I lose those. Um, so, but this is a, a forcing move. And um, so I get one more. Let's see if he, if he, if I, um, yeah, if he stops like that, then this is alive like this. So, I mean, not alive. That's one eye, one eye. And then I have an eye up here, I guess. So let's fill in that uh, co. Don't want him to return to that co <laughs> and destroy my uh, potential eye up here. Well, so I successfully lived in the center there where he was threatening to take over everything. So I'll count that as a success for me. Let's look at where he has territory now. He's got this on the side. This is a pretty big group over here. The scattering of stones over here does not have much. Okay, this is the, the key point. He's going to try and destroy this eye. So I go here, he will run out. He runs out, I will Hane. Cuts, I'll extend. If I go here and he runs in, I will just block. And then when he runs out, I will take it. So I think I will capture that stone this way and make an eye. So yes, before I start counting territory, I have to make sure this group is alive. Um, so assuming I'm living, so he had this territory and this territory in the corner. I have, he can still come into this corner maybe. I have something over here, something over here, small corner here, and it's a little bit over here. I don't know. These ragtag bits of territory. Maybe with Comey, I'll have enough to make up for what he's got. But let's wait and see how this all results. He can capture this stone and build some territory here. But I can try and make this territory bigger. I guess. Okay, so let's go ahead. Looks like he's just going to seal me in here. Which makes sense. Let's go ahead and make sure I'm alive. There. 
all connected and alive. And he got all of that. So let's um, enlarge my biggest group, maybe here. End game moves. Here looks like a good end game move too. Taking the stone maybe worth something. At some point, um, reconnecting this stone or connecting this stone back to my stones over here will be big. Taking here, maybe not so much. So I guess at this point, he's wondering if he can play in the 3 3. I mean, this is a stone on the 4 3. I mean, this was a high enclosure, so there may be some weaknesses back here. I don't know, and we'll just have to fight it out. Okay, yeah, so that was the other thing, right? If I had played here, I would have had an answer to this move. Um, push first. If I push and he descends, and I try to cut him off, he cuts me off. I extend. I push, he extends. I Hane. If he doesn't cut on this side, he might uh, extend on this side. I extend, so he, he, and then I can connect in either of two ways. So he has to Hane back. Then I can Atari this stone and connect. So I think I can get away with that push. And he agrees. Okay, and then I'll then I'll play this one. So now this is solid. Becoming solid territory. What is that? Three, six, eight, three, six, nine, twelve, fifteen, eighteen, twenty-one, twenty-five, maybe. Okay, captured that stone. Uh, like I said, connecting here. It's uh, end game. Hane under here. And this one is Sente, I guess. Although it's not huge, it's not big. So uh, jumping out here, trying to reduce what he's getting here. Maybe threaten to connect up with this stone. He can jump down here. And then I have the honey over on this side. Yeah, so already he's looking to reduce this area. Huh. See, he's looking to kill it. <laughs> Not just reduce it, but kill it. Uh, that's, a, that's a little bit disturbing. Okay, so that's one eye. Don't be, dis don't be fooled by the uh, shape there. It's just one eye. Now he's looking for something he can play here. Probably wondering if, uh, it, yeah, he doesn't bother stopping me from connecting here. Although I do this with Sente. This is also Sente. Because the cut here, and I have a snapback on those two stones. So I play here. 
it will respond there and I can come on this side <laughs> I think, yeah, I think he's succeeded in falsifying this eye. he plays here yeah that looks like a, a false eye there right I can take that stone doesn't really help. So I connect here. He takes there. Or I take here. Even if I connect there, it doesn't doesn't matter. I'm actually this is connected to here, so if I were able to make an eye there. <clears throat> I would be fine, but I can't make an eye. That's, a, that's a, just a false eye there. See, there is still this cutting point over here, huh? One, so I go here, he connects, I descend. He turns here. I throw in here, he connects. So close. So yeah, I throw in here, he connects, I descend. I've got three liberties and he has two. But he can extend. I will Hane and uh, he's got two liberties and I'm down to two and it's his turn. So he just cuts, I go here, and he takes my two stones. It just doesn't seem to work. <clears throat> hmm. Yep, so I was overconfident about my ability to live with that group. <laughs> and, uh, and it came back to bite me. So what are the other weaknesses around the border? Poking here, he just connects. Poking here, he connects. Might as well take there. I'm going to play this out to see what it is, what the score is, but it looks like I lost because of this group. <laughs> this is a, a horse, right? This is the body of the horse. That's his tail, and this is his head. <laughs> but the, uh, the, 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 the head of the horse doesn't have an eye. <laughs> and this loose group of stones that I was trying to harass earlier, it's connected over here. What is it really connected to? Yeah, it's connected all the way to this side, it looks like. Anyway, yeah, I'll just try and maximize what I can. Probably coming back and connecting over here at C nineteen is a is a big one. C 
18. Um, let's see, so I can poke in there, <clears throat> you'll have to connect. Is there any more Sente endgame? I honey here, yeah, I guess that's something. This is Sente here, I can poke in there. Here and there, we'll just poke, poke where we can. Try and connect up over here. Yeah, I mean, I got a pretty big corner here, but this is small. This is not very big and this is dead, <laughs> so. I think the dead group is probably more than enough to account for all my territory. But I want to play it out and see what the um, score is at the end. Okay, if I honey and he cuts, I take, he extends, I connect. Um, I think I'm good because I'm connected all the way out to here. So we'll just protect like so. Yeah, I have to stay connected here. Yeah, actually this group is connected all the way out to this sign. The descent here would be uh, reverse sente. It would stop him from playing a sente move. Let's go ahead and do that. Oh, I played inside. Okay, so this is an Atari. And this is like a double peep, but uh, he can just connect, right? Yep, and let's connect here. How many captures? Let's see. He's captured five black stones and I've captured two white stones. So I do have that reverse Komi. That's my only hope. <laughs> and he doesn't have much territory except for the captured stones. Oh, and this, this chunk over here is pretty decent, I guess. Yeah, so if only I'd lived with these guys. Well, we'll look at that with uh, Sabaki and Katigo. I'm sure it'll find the critical turning points. It was shaping up to be a pretty, pretty nice game, I thought. A lot of interesting fights. Okay, because he can turn there and force me to connect. So let's just go ahead and connect. <clears throat> right, we're about done here. Yeah, I don't think there's any tricks. This is an eye that might be a false eye, except that he has that eye there. So 
I can't really falsify it. Can't throw in. I have a cut here. It just connects. He put one stone in the middle here. Maybe he was worried about some weaknesses in this area, but it looks like it's nothing to me. Can he make another eye over here? If he plays here or here. No, he, he can't make another eye. So I think I will pass on my next move. Uh, I can't add to this group. It just, uh, it's, uh, it's a dead group. And I don't see any throw-ins here. Just taking away these liberties. Ah, I can force him to connect here if I take away all these liberties. Boom, boom, boom. So that would be one point. I don't think it's a one point game, so I'm gonna go ahead and pass rather than drag it out. And then let's uh, mark everything that's dead. This is dead. This is dead. This is dead. So I'm alive here and here and here. He's got uh, these dame points and these dame points. Yeah, so we got one extra point here that uh, he didn't really deserve. Let's click done. And he won by 41 points. And we'll say thanks for the game. And um, then let's uh, check that out with Sabaki and Katago. And I'll see you guys later. Bye. I took a look at this game with um, Katago, and uh, I got some interesting results. So first of all, I did the trick. I edited the uh, SGF file to make the Komi uh, normal. So five and a half points of Komi is what you normally get in these games. And so it starts out about even. And as it drops here, this is good for me. I'm black. And then at the end, I was losing. And you can see there are these various turning points. But it's interesting that I got off to a good start. Uh, I think this shows I, I do okay in the uh, opening phases. I just get into trouble in the uh, middle game fights. I've seen this pattern before in my games. Anyway, let's look at some of these uh, opening moves. Um, first of all, when he did this uh, double approach to my corner and I played the diagonal move, the, the AI approved of that move. I thought it was a decent way of defending the corner. Notice um, when your opponent plays this first approach here and it's as far away as a large knight's move, you don't even have to respond. It's not even threatening the corner any more than, uh, well, I mean, it was always open to a 3-3 and it still is. That hasn't changed. So you really don't have to respond. And so it's, it's uh, probably better, in fact, to find a big move elsewhere. But once he's got the double surround on, then you need to uh, start defending the corner. And um, well, I did okay here. Let's see. I, you have a choice here with black of defending on the inside or the outside. Um, there are some lines where I think uh, white can try and grab the corner and you get outside influence here. Um, but uh, the AI preferred those lines for black. Um, and so it, it actually played like this. This was the AI continuation with the, let's see, honey, you know, honey on the outside, white honey's back. Then you play on the inside and uh, extend down. So I guess you get one more stone on the outside compared to what I played. Anyway, I just played directly on the inside. And uh, it's, uh, I mean, this is still good for me because white's play has been a bit suspicious in the opening here, but uh, I could have done better with the honey on the outside, according to the AI at least. And now here was an interesting point. I, I could have followed up here, but I decided to play a big move elsewhere. Um, and the AI does like this playing one follow-up and then it has both sides playing away. So it's kind of funny. It will attack the stone as black and as white. It won't bother to defend it, but will look for a big move elsewhere. Um, but anyway, this is not a bad time to play away, I guess, but uh, I could have gotten in one more or tried to get in one more forcing move before I played away. Um, so as we go on, uh, let's see. At this point, uh, he's jumped in between my stones. And I was trying to find ways to harass his group. I played here to take away the base. Um, the AI likes this move even better. But uh, seemingly it's in, a, in a accord with the uh, idea of, uh, of harassing that group. Although I really did not like this move. I thought I needed to defend this corner, but I guess... Uh, I'm being overly cautious. I mean, I am out as well as I do have uh, some space in the corner. So uh, it would continue on this side. Um, it also thought just extending by one stone was, was good as well. 
Okay, but let's continue on. Just marked some interesting points. Yeah, the fight is continuing here, and here's where I played inside to try and take away eye space. I guess that at this point, that's kind of a, a fruitless endeavor, and uh, you know, he's either going to be able to make a, an eye, and well, there's at least one eye there, and he's out. out. White is out, so um, taking a big move here, keeping these stones from running rampant in the middle and extending this group seems to be the preference of the AI. Anyway, let's go back to my move. Let's go on to the next interesting points. Notice that through all of this, however, I, I am keeping uh, some kind of advantage. So it goes up and down. When it's, when it's down here, I have about a five point advantage. When it goes up to there, I have like a two or three point advantage. Uh, and although it, the win rates are, are quite dramatic, but the, the difference in point score is not that great. Uh, and then here, this this move where I just made the bamboo joint, and uh, you know, I was thinking maybe I would I would he would he would respond here, but he didn't, and he doesn't have to because he can still connect, and he's out. So this was kind of a a wasted move. And instead, uh, this is the point where the AI would like me to jump into the corner here, which I did later in the game. Anyway, let's continue on. Next turning point, you can see, uh, you know, I make some bad moves and then I make some, and he makes some bad moves. So it's still bouncing around with a slight edge to black through all of this. Now here was a turning point where, where actually there was quite a significant difference. Um, I, I could have played this peep here <laughs> and uh, the AI, AI really likes this peep. Even though um, I end up losing this stone, this is a sacrifice. I mean, it looks like a double peep and it might do some damage, but basically white can connect and I can't really run anywhere. But what it does is it gives me forcing moves around the outside to threaten to connect up and use that to build walls on uh, maybe this side or over on this side, which will extend this group. And it, you know, just limits his influence in the center. So that's this is a great sacrifice. I missed that idea. And also when I connected here, that was a very slow move. And uh, I didn't I didn't write it down, but at this point, uh, White had some strong moves that could have given him a bigger advantage. He didn't he didn't play the best move there. He just responded. I think yeah, maybe he should have played over here, but uh, and harassed this group, which is a little weak looking. Anyway, let's continue on to the next turning point. So so White could have gotten even there, but he didn't. And then right here, this is where White starts climbing up to even again. Let's see. I, I played. This move on the outside, once again, uh, the AI wants me to throw in <laughs> with the idea of losing that stone. So, and it's an interesting idea and something I don't, I don't do often enough. Uh, okay, and then finally here, when he does the Hane, I just, um, oh, I did the cut and the cut doesn't work at all. Yeah, this is actually a turning point of the game. Well, one of them, I actually get back into it later, but one of the turning points. So this, the cut I played was, was useless. And um, I could simply extend. That's one idea. Or I could play here. And uh, well, this is a move I played later, although I played it one step higher, just trying to bust up what white is doing on this side. So those would be good moves. This, this move here, oops, excuse me, back up. This move that I played, this cut, just didn't work. And then uh, white has a pretty big advantage through here. I think uh, the thing is white played one move too often in this area, but here, uh, you know, White's, White's got a several point advantage. And what did he do? He followed up with this Hane. Maybe this Hane was no good. At some point, I connect. Uh, it's this move here was too slow. Okay, yeah, at some point, White plays a slow move and I get back into the game. So <laughs> anyway, it's going back and forth in this point. And, and it was never at this stage more than like five points one way or the other that I remember. Um, Let's see, white jumped out here, and this is when I chose to jump in. Um, as I mentioned, the AI likes the, to jump in a little deeper there. Um, that's a bit scary to me. You know, white could try coming on top. I guess I have enough room to live underneath there, but uh, <laughs> hard for me to tell that. So anyway, I tried to play it a little bit safer there. Um, so in this fight here, when I'm jumping out, it really liked, um, after white played this move, it really liked extending down once more. And then uh, also it liked um, simply jumping out here. So those are a couple ideas. Actually, I followed this line, I think, a little bit. Yeah, after here, it also said I should be jumping out. Anyway, I played this uh, diagonal move. I jumped out 
diagonally trying to make a little eye space, although I, I didn't ever end up with any eye space there, and, and I was in big trouble. So this is where it gets to the second point. Um, yeah, it didn't like that move. It wanted to play here. Now, this is an interesting uh, fighting move, trying to cut the corner off and maybe connect this stone up with these stones, or maybe connect up over here. You know, um, I should be questioning White's connections. He's got there's a knight's move there and a knight's move there connecting these stones up. I couldn't follow the fighting after this point. It got very complicated, but uh, this is a good kind of fighting move I should be willing to think about as well. So those are my, my takeaways from this part, uh, is I should consider those sacrifice moves that, that give me uh, outside, outside free outside moves and consider these uh, fighting moves here to break apart and question my opponent's connections. So I missed those ideas. And white is slowly doing better here. Um, and then somewhere around here, ah, it liked this, uh, it liked this counter Hane. I remember I did this Hane back and let him take here. It thought that was good. And then it thought I should follow up with another move on the outside like this. And then it thinks this is still pretty good for me. Uh, but instead I, I just connected at this point over here. And, uh, and now this is, um, well, as the fight continues, I get into trouble here. I guess right here is another turning point where I just connected this stone and it says I should turn here. I was actually considering this move. I was trying to decide between these two moves, this one and, uh, and this one. But I thought he would cut here. And, and what the uh, computer says is I should just uh, sacrifice that stone again. And uh, you know I can continue to extend here. This gives me some more moves on this side and uh, some more moves out here. So uh, anyway, it thinks I'm fine at this point, but I do get into trouble. I had a feeling I was lost. And I think, uh, is it here? I think right around here, I'm, I'm losing again because I don't, uh, I don't play the right move here. Yeah, the, the fight is continuing and the game is still up in the air at this point and it's gotten pretty interesting. And uh, I thought about the extension here and I decided not to play it because I thought it would, uh, it would just end up taking those stones anyway and I looked for another move. But uh, in fact, uh, this seems to be good for me. If he blocks on this side, then I can come out and connect up over here and also go after these two stones. So it looks like this is good for me. And if if he blocks on this side, this is kind of what I was expecting. I thought I would get killed here because he can keep me separated from my stones. But I just uh, keep descending here and, uh, and then I follow up with this move. And these stones are dead inside. He has to sacrifice them right now. If he connects, I'm actually going to scoop out this entire area. So that was uh, just a complete uh, miss by me. Uh, let's see. What was the follow-up move? The, yeah, I think the follow-up move is for White to connect and just sacrifice those stones. But of course, that, that wins for me. I mean, that saves this group, and I am winning if I save that group in a good way. I, I, um, but I didn't play that way. I played this forcing move here. He took the stones. I connected once more. I got some extensions and turned, so I made an eye there. And uh, let's see, what did it like here? Ah, uh, yeah, this is where white could kill me. <laughs> Instead of playing the block here, uh, if white plays here, he just kills the whole group. So this is where white is winning again because this group here cannot, uh, could be killed. I, I did not successfully uh, <laughs> uh, make it live against the best defense. And th that was one chance uh, white had to kill that group. And then here's another one. Yeah, it was this move here. If uh, white has had extended here, I thought this was going to be okay for me. I was planning to play here. He does the Hane and I thought this group would uh, come out <laughs> and he wouldn't kill it. But in fact, this was a pretty simple read. He does kill that group. And then, then my group is dead because it just has one eye and it's surrounded. So that was a uh, second chance he had to kill that group and uh, he let it live. And so I'm still in the game at this point. And, uh, and I'm in the game up until this, this is, the losing move right here when I connected those stones. So yeah, up to this point, let's see. Well, that point, that move was weak. You can see the, the percentages start to shift, but, but this group is, uh, can still live at this point, And it's really just a few, 
a few um, few points difference. You know, these swings from 80% in one direction to 80% in another. We're just talking about a few stones difference at the end. But this connection here ended ended the game, and I didn't uh, realize that uh, my group was in trouble until too late. It was here when he played this move that I realized it, and that was the best move there. And I realized I can only have one eye here and that I'm not connected to this side. Now, um, there are a couple ways to save this group. One is the simple um, Hane here. And, uh, but uh, before I go into that, there's actually a trick here because the Hane by itself doesn't, doesn't entirely work. And the trick is to play this move, this cut, which is something I was always looking at because it's a forcing move. But I thought white could connect here. But it turns out that white can't. If white connects, then I can Hane. White can descend and I can play this move. And this actually kills. <laughs> white can cut here and win the one stone. But I follow up with an Atari, white takes. I can descend here threatening the turn, which would be an Atari on these stones. White blocks that, then I turn here. And we see that this is a group that will take me one, two, three moves to kill. And I have four liberties on the outside here and more than that over here. So I, in fact, can uh, win that group with that cut. So what that means is that when I cut here, uh, white has to play this move. Oops, let's back up. I play the cut, white has to play this move. And then I can take this stone. And what this means is that after the Atari's and I connect, this means that I'm connected all the way to this <laughs> living group here. So it doesn't matter how many eyes I have in this direction. And so I just live. And so that's the, the way to live still at this point. And, uh, and I'm still winning the game at this point. Uh, and then the other move, I, I could have started with the uh, Hane here. This also works. And then if he blocks, then I do the cut. But it requires, it relies on the same trick. I can either, if he saves this side, I can capture these stones. And if he uh, saves this side, then I can take this stone and connect out. And so that's how I could have saved the game. Anyway, and then after I played this move, it is just uh, completely <laughs> winning for uh, white the rest of the way. Just a question of how much. Anyway, it was an interesting game. Hope you enjoyed all of those little fights. I guess uh, uh, the, there were three. <laughs> there were three lessons for me out of this one. One was the first one was uh, look for those sacrifice moves. Uh, the second one was uh, uh, look for those cuts when you see your opponent with a weak shape or a shape where it's connected by knight's moves. Look for cuts to start a fight. And then the third lesson, which applies to uh, both here and here, is I need to read better, which is uh, always what I need. Anyway, uh, had fun. Hope you did too, and I will see you next time. Bye now.